Hey guys, and welcome to an Unfiltered Gamer Top 5 video. Today's Top 5 video is a little different because it's not actually about board games, it is about one specific card game. And uh, some of you, most of you probably know what this game is, and it's called Magic the Gathering by Wizards of the Coast, uh, the parent company Hasbro. And in the game Magic the Gathering, there are tons of different formats. Uh, this one specifically that I play is called EDH, Elder Dragon Highlander. Um, or Commander, as it's normally referred to when you go to buy a set of these cards in the store. Uh, ADH is basically a hundred unique cards, 99 in a deck, and then one singular Commander. And that Commander's colors are the different types of colors associated with the cards in your deck. Uh, and the objective is to defeat your opponents, to reduce their health to a measly zero. Um, uh, you start with 40 life in Commander as opposed to the regular 20, and the game is typically played with multiplayer in mind. It's a casual format. I'm not going to go into more EDH stuff as far as how the game is played or anything like that, because most of you probably know what it is already, and I'm just going to talk about my top 10 favorite Commanders, uh, the decks that I have kept over a period of time, and then I have one bonus one at the end. This might allow you to decide what type of Commander to build, and of course why, based on the commanders that I've chosen and uh, the cards in the deck, a very brief synopsis of each of the decks, so we'll keep this kind of light. Uh, the first commander that I have is called Captain Sisse. This card allows you to search your library for a legend card and then put it into your hand after you tap it. It basically will allow you, if you're playing with the deck that I am using, to search through your, de your deck for almost anything you want. In the deck you're going to find legendary lands, creatures, enchantments, and artifacts, and it is basically an answer for every uh, or solution for every answer. So when somebody plays something on you, you can tap to say, utilize her, and then find something you need in the deck in order to solidify or satisfy the requirement. It, whether it just be maybe a basic land uh, or basic type, you know, just a land that you might need. So Unatake is available for you. Or maybe you want a Nykthos, Shrine of Nyx. You can pull these lands out and utilize them. Or a legendary artifact like Helm of the Host, allowing you to copy your creatures and ignore the fact that they are legendary, even creating more sisses, allowing you to search more. The entire deck is basically a tutor deck, and whenever you need something, you can just go ahead and search for it. The one weakness in Sisse is that if you defeat or destroy Sisse, the deck traumatically takes a turn, and you start basically turning it into kind of a green ramp deck. The, the deck is basically a white and a green deck, obviously based on commander color type, and so because of that, it's mainly made out of ramp, powerful creatures, unique and interesting artifacts, enchantments, and a, a strong um, plethora of legendary lands. This deck has withstood the test of time in my collection and has been something I have kept uh, ever since I started making it just to keep making it better and better because more legendaries are always coming out and making the deck that's that much nicer each and every time I go into it and find new cards for it. Uh, the top 10 list is not in any specific order, but maybe I'll give a couple uh, high mentions to my favorite ones of the bunch. Sisse would definitely be in my top five. Uh, the next deck I have here is actually my most recent deck and it's called Fenix God of Deception. This is a mill deck. For any of you who don't know, know what mill is, mill allows you to remove cards from your opponent's decks and put them into the graveyard, and then as, as you continue to play cards that do so, when their deck is emptied and they go to draw a card from their deck, typically speaking, they'll lose the game. And that's exactly what this commander lets you do. It is a black and a blue card, allowing you to utilize the mill from blue and the basically the draw, mill, and damage from black. A lot of the creatures in the deck that are black typically will attack your opponent and do damage to them based on the number of creatures in graveyards or number of cards in graveyards or opponent's graveyard or unblockable and will they'll lose life based on that and then the blue cards typically speaking are going to mill your opponent for a tremendous amount of HP and also I have a lot of copy spells that way I can copy the creatures that I have used or I'm using to basically mill even more. I have these special Ashiok commanders that will allow you to mill your opponents or discard card your or remove your opponent's top cards of their deck from the game and then bring them back into play. And then of course things like increasing confusion, which you pay X and blue, removing cards from your opponent's library uh, into the graveyard, and then you have flashback allowing you to do it once again. Unique combo in the deck is hinder, hinder, and tunnel vision. Basically you can counter our opponent's spell with a little bit of control and then put it on the bottom of their deck and then you can tunnel vision them, basically removing cards up until they you, you reach a card that you choose uh, from the top of the deck to the bottom of the deck and at that point your op 
opponent will mill themselves out instantaneously. And that can happen as soon as turn four or five with the appropriate powerful deck. Uh, the next card, or next commander I should say, is this one here. This one's called Sliver Overlord. Uh, this card is basically the uh, tribal like hierarch in my opinion. It's one of the uh, everlasting tribals that players will always use because slivers are so interesting and so unique and they're always coming out with new ones in maybe subsequent like every like four or five sets you're gonna see a new like set of slivers to some extent. Uh, I have all the five color slivers in the deck. But the reason I chose the captain is because he can search, he can tutor for any slivers that he may need uh, from your deck and then he can also gain control of slivers. So I can start turning my opponent's uh, creatures into slivers and then taking control of them with my captain. <laughs> very, very, very powerful. Uh, I utilize a lot of spells that reduce the cost of specific types of creatures, AKA slivers. I use things like coat of arms, allowing my, my slivers to kind of increase in value as more slivers come out. And I like to use a lot of lands that focus specifically on creatures. So things like, oh, I don't know, Gaia's Cradle would be a really good land for the deck. Now, of course that card is like a thousand dollars, but there are other options as well that you can utilize. Uh, but nevertheless, as you play slivers, they get more and more beefy and more of them come out and it starts getting to the point where you have basically just won and you continue to win more. And it's a very strong uh, multiplayer deck because you only need a couple creatures to hit each player and you can make them unblockable death touch life like you can just kind of do anything you want with slivers so they're a tribal commander set that also allows you to kind of go in and go at anybody that you would like now, this is my favorite deck of all. This one is called Send Triplets. It's actually a really cheap commander now. It has the three colors of black, blue, and white. Uh, my favorite three colors of magic, that's Esper. Uh, this card itself is interesting. It allows you to basically stop opponents from utilizing spells on your turn. You can look at their hand and play cards from your, their hand as though they were yours, as long as you can pay for them. I don't really care about the commander in the deck though. My favorite aspect of this deck is just the fact that I have all the cards that I enjoy playing with. Uh, I have a lot of Recursion, I have things like Consecrated Sphinx and Karn, I've got Exhum, I've got Sholadred, I've got Jingataxius, Liliana, Sphinx of the Second Sun, a ton of the different uh, favorite lands that I own, uh, different things like Muta Vault, um, and, and of course I have things like Mana Vault. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a control thing, uh, it, it's a bit of answers, it has things like Time Stop that can basically prevent your opponent from continuing their turn or just simply making them stop their turn instantly and it's just kind of a one house power card for blue. Um, yeah, The deck is basically a conglomeration of all of my favorite cards that I like to utilize in my three favorite colors and it's kind of just a strong deck that says no you can't do that here's a thing you have to deal with. Okay, great, now deal with this thing. No, you can't do that. That's pretty much what it does. And the commander being send triplets has that aspect to it. No, you can't play cards on my turn and also I can play your cards on my turn. The next commander I have is called Hazazan Tamar. This is actually my wife's deck. I made this for her. This one is a uh, white, white, uh, green and red my my you know, colors that are okay uh, but I really like this commander and I wanted her to utilize this one because it has so many combinations. Hazazan is so interesting because when he comes into play he allows you to create a ton of tokens based on the number of lands you have but it's the turn after the turn you put him into play and whenever he goes so do all the tokens. So what you can do is you can flicker him a bunch of times when he comes into play and then you can remove him from the game or remove him to back to the command zone and he'll basically pump a ton of tokens onto the field and the deck's all about tokens, allowing you to copy additional tokens, create additional tokens, uh, utilizing those tokens to sacrifice them for mana, uh, playing things like uh, Hwatli, it's the newest card I just got, uh, that will basically put loyalty counters for each creature you control onto them, and I'll gain an emblem that says whenever a creature I control enters the playing field, I get to draw a card, which kind of simulates uh, a card draw for playing my commander. Playing my commander, got eight lands, I get eight cards on my next turn, just from having her on the field and pumping her up in two turns. Um, things like Xenagos that give you more mana for creatures, parallel lives. I have things like March of Multitudes, uh, of course, Terastodon. I have a Vendor of Zendikar. I've bas basically all the big green creatures that you should be very scared of would be in this deck. Tooth and Nail, uh, ways to basically get the creatures out very easily, Green Sun Zenith. This is basically a powerhouse deck with a ton of different combos, including like Perforos, whenever creatures into the battlefield, everybody starts taking damage. And it's all about tokens at the highest value. It's a very expensive deck but it really really works and it's a lot of fun and I like seeing my wife come out and just decimate a table even though sadly most of the time it's also me included in that. 
Uh, my next favorite deck is, uh, I guess, Golos, Tireless Pilgrim. This is a maze deck. Basically, there is uh, 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 10 lands in the deck and a separate land that says whenever you get those lands into play, you just win the game. Uh, this commander, all he does basically is when he comes into play, you can search for a land to put into play and you can pay one of each color and two to allow you to look at the top three cards or remove the top three cards from the library from the game and then play them for free. But he's mainly used for his land ability. You can flicker him over and over again to put more lands of your, cho your, your choice, not just basic lands, into play and basically giving you those gates quicker. The deck is all about preventing opponents from being able to do certain things, utilizing uh, cards that say it costs two more for your opponent to attack you for each creature they choose to attack you with or you don't take damage whenever you have this or that or if you have one or more creatures you go down to one life you're still alive it's worship um, and so on and so forth I use a lot of things like ramp I use things like the Rand dynamo um, I play a lot of enchantments in the deck so I'll use enchanters presence which lets you draw cards whenever you play them seedborn muse which allows you to kind of ramp up quicker and longer uh, rustic study is always a card to add in the blue deck but yeah the, the deck it's basically all about putting in more lands into play. There's actually one card in here that lets me search for 10 land cards and just simply put them into play, which is basically a win con for me if I can get that out. Uh, a really, really powerful deck. The next one here is called Phage the Untouchable. This was actually a joke deck originally, but I've kind of been turning it into more competitive deck. It's not really a competitive deck, but I've been turning it into more of one. Phage the Untouchable says that whenever it comes into play from anywhere but you hand, you lose the game. Whenever it touches a creature or another player with damage, they lose the game. It's a really powerful card, but it's also very dangerous. If an opponent flickers Phage, if an opponent um, makes you play it in any way other than from your hand, it's, it's crazy and nasty. So this entire deck is also black, which makes it even more challenging to be able to actually play Phage from your command zone, because typically when you play Phage from your command zone, you lose the game. So there are a ton of cards in this deck that will allow me to not lose the game when Phage would come into play. Um, and also there's a ton of cards that when it say whenever Phage hits a graveyard or does a certain thing, it, it kind of goes to somebody else and it basically just instantly kills them. And there are cards like Sundial of the Infinite that basically end your turn the moment she hits play. So instead of her triggering the ability to make you lose the game after she enters play, you can end your turn and thusly keep Phage. And there's a ton of cards that basically do that in this deck. A little bit of a recursion, ability to kind of pay life. It's all about hurting yourself dramatically to get her into play as quickly as possible, to tutor what you need to get her into play, and also, of course, to make sure that she's unblockable. So there's lands in there like Rogue's Passage that will kind of uh, alleviate her, um, her uh, less abled ability to kind of hit players uh, they have she has to actually swing in with a, a unblockable utilizing a variety of different things like whisper silk cloak as well uh, a really fun and interesting commander not one i would ever suggest a beginner to build because it's a very challenging deck to construct and to utilize zedru the great hearted this is one of my favorite decks as well obviously and this guy basically will allow you to donate tokens or donate anything that you own to another player. You'll be playing things in this deck to give to an opponent and thusly allow you to draw cards and gain life for each of those permanents that you do every upkeep. And there's a ton of cards that you can give in this deck that are, you know, sometimes nice and most of the time not so nice. And there's also a ton of cards in the deck that will let you donate uh, cards with the cards that you're utilizing. You'll give people things like Tanawa, basically it phases and has trample, being of your upkeep, all your lands phase out. So it it's not the greatest thing to give to somebody. It stops them from being able to do something. Um, you can think, do things like Chrome Shell Crab, which can trade the crab for one of their items. Um, and of course, don't forget always Rhystic Study. Uh, let me try and find something that I, I have Approach of the Second Sun as a second win con because this deck is mainly about group hug or group hate. And so I needed some way to win the game and Approach does that, allowing me to play the card, put it in the top seven, uh, or in the seventh card from the top, and then once I draw it again, I can play it and instantly win the game. Uh, but there are a ton of uh, nasty things. Lich's Tomb, I can give this to a person. They don't lose the game for having zero or less life. But whenever they lose life, they have to sack a permanent for each life lost. So if they lose 10 life, they sack 10 permanents, including Lich's Tomb. It's a nasty card to give to somebody. And if it stays in play with them, then I net a ton, um, a ton of card draw and a ton of HP. And there's a bunch of cards that say you can't play creature cards. You get plus two damage but you discard your hand at the end of your turn and you're just giving all that stuff away because you want to be a nice guy and you get something in return for doing so and everybody's happy that you did. 
Uh, the next card, or next deck, I should say, is this, this is starting to get into the more uh, janky, crazy stuff. Uh, this is Narset Enlightened Master. Narset is a competitive deck. In fact, two of the three of these are extremely competitive, and one is a complete joke. Um, Narset is one of the competitive decks. The moment you get her into play and you attack with her, you're going to look at the top cards of your library. If you find a take an extra turn or an extra combat, you've basically won the game. It's all about taking additional turns. And what she does is she allows you to look at the top four cards, and uh, you can, until end of turn, cast them without paying their mana cost, as long as they are a non-creature. Uh, so really powerful. She also has first strike and hex proof, which makes her untouchable. A uh, very very useful commander, one of the best in my opinion in the game. And once she hits, once she attacks, you're 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 in trouble because uh, the player that has a million different uh, take an extra turn, take two extra turns on top of their deck is basically just going to overburden you with being able to do nothing. It's a hilarious deck for me to play, but no one else likes to play against me with it, so I almost never play it unless it's in tournament because basically I just end up taking additional turns for ever after about the fourth or fifth turn and I win the game with my commander or a few other variants like omnipotence and omnipresence that lets you draw your entire deck and play your entire deck for free. A crazy deck. It's not fair. It's it's kind of mean. Uh, the next deck is the joke deck. And this is like a super silly deck. And basically what it is is called Slimefoot the Stowaway. My uh, friends wanted me to make a deck that didn't have all the crazy rares in it. So I challenged myself to try and make an uncommon or less deck. And uh, he's a legendary fungus. He's a 2-3 that lets me put more funguses into play. And whenever a fungus dies or a sapperling... Um, Sorry, whenever a creature I control dies, right? A sapperling I control dies, I get a life and somebody else loses a life. So it's all about sapperlings. I'm using a lot of the old, like, fungusy type of things from, like, the older sets. And then I try to use a couple of the cards that well, are uncommon that let me kind of put additional tokens into play and um, proliferate and all that kind of stuff. So the deck's all about putting out slimes and attacking your opponents. It's a silly deck. Um, I, I just really enjoy it. I just think it's a lot of fun to play and winning with it is kind of even more uh, interesting. You know, it's kind of like a more prideful thing when I actually accomplish a win with that deck because everybody else is playing with crazy cards and I'm just throwing out, here's four 1-1 one, one slimes, your turn. <laughs> now my last deck. The last deck here is called Sidisi Undead Vizier. Um, and this deck here is the most broken deck that I own. It's unfair if you're into Magic the Gathering. Uh, if you watch this far, you probably are. And you want something to instantly win that's basically the cheapest deck you could actually make. Sidisi is where it's at. You can um, spend maybe less than 200 bucks, uh, even, even less than that if you really wanted to, to make a deck that's all about winning on the third turn 90% of the time. Yes, I said that. 90 to 95% of the time you win on the third, maybe fourth turn. So DC basically says when she comes into play, uh, you can put her back into the command zone, so to speak, uh, to uh, search for card for a life. Whenever this enters the battlefield, I can sack this creature and I can basically search my deck for a card to put into my hand. And so I'll search my deck and there's only one card in this entire deck that you need to search for. And basically on the next turn after that, you, you, you win the game. Ad nauseum. Ad nauseum lets me reveal the top card of my library, pay the life for the converted mana cost, and put it into my hand until I don't want to do so anymore. Uh, now the trick is, I have 40 life in Commander as opposed to the 20. All of my stuff in this deck, uh, besides a few cards, is zero or X. And I'm basically going to take them all into my hand instantaneously. I'm going to play them all out, and then I'm going to do something um, like sacrifice, sacrifice creatures or remove cards from my hand to instantly deal damage. There's a ton of different ways to do so. Um, Scourge Familiar lets you discard cards from your hand and you get one black mana, mana for each one that you do. And then you can simply play a card like, um, I don't know, uh, there's con Consumed Spirit. Uh, it's, it's one black and one colorless and X. And for X that I pay, I can do damage uh, to target creature or player and I gain that much life. Um, if my combo fails, I can simply refresh my entire discard pile back into my library and rinse and repeat if need be. And yeah, the deck is basically just about grabbing the entire deck on about the fourth turn, you know, to be kind of more more likely, and then playing it all out instantly. It's all zero cost stuff. And it doesn't matter what the zero cost stuff is. You could play anything from... Wow, these are all lands. <laughs> uh, Dark Sphere, I have no idea what it does. Phyrexian Walker is a 0-3 artifact creature for zero and it does nothing. Um, I put some things that cost one, like Soul Ring into here and also or Glasses of Urza. Um, and then there's Ever Flowing Chalice. Um, 
And yeah, it just goes on and on. Paradise, Mantle, Felden's Cane. They're all basically zeros that don't do anything but hit the play and count as a spell and can also trigger for Storm, etc., etc. It's a mean deck. It's something that I would win constantly in my uh, EDH, casual EDH card game, else uh, local friendly card game shop. And they banned the deck after I played it three times because I kept taking first and no one was having fun, not even myself. So you know, don't play Sadisi unless you're looking to uh, torture your friends. And if so, uh, prepare yourself because I'll probably do some type of uh, in-depth discussion over the course of the weeks, talking about each of my decks, uh, the most powerful combinations and uh, maybe even like the mana base and the mana curve and what I think would be good. And if you like any of these commanders, let me know in the comments and I'll pick that commander to do first in the video. But anyway, these are my top 10 favorite commanders. Sadisi is not on my favorites list, but I feel like it's a good like special mention because it's so powerful. And I think that players who just want to win and get prize packs and stuff, they, they might want to go with that one as, as well. That's mean, but you can do so. It's also easily countered. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my commander video, my top 10. I know this is kind of is something different than I normally do, but I love Magic the Gathering. I've never talked about it, oddly enough, on the channel or anywhere else. So I figured uh, let's go ahead and do so and uh, see if people are interested in uh, my decks. All right. Talk to you guys later.